for having me and thank you for coming. I thought I'd focus my talk on the power of a studio residency and being somewhere other than your familiar space. I have a studio in um, Clyburn Street that has a beautiful, massive press that I can't transport anywhere. So that to me is my safe haven. Going out on residencies for me is one of the most important parts of what I do artistically, the way I develop, the way I research, um, because a lot of my work is based on buildings and the way I respond to places. Um, it's important for me to go to another country. I can't always stay in this country. So the residency or the studio per se, I think started for me, I found this. I made this in 1981. I found it in my father's garage. And so I guess that was my first studio residency when I was with my father in his garage. He was a mechanic, he loved doing the mechanical things. And he helped me build this idea that I had. It was a max project. It was about you know infinity and the circumference. And I started weaving into it. So much to my surprise when I re-found this after we were cleaning out my father's garage. Um, it, kind of, it dawned on me that I could do something like this to reinvent the loom on this residency, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I've been on a few residencies, and I mean, this one, for example, I had a residency in New York and sold the wit, who is a, you know, he's a constructor, he's an artist who made very minimal works, and there was a sculpture sitting downtown, so I sat in front of that sculpture, and I made these drawings from it, which I then transcribed to copper. So I'm a printmaker. I work with copper. Does anyone have seen copper, right? right? So these are my beautiful copper plates. Without copper, I don't think I'm, you know, much of an artist. But, you know, you kind of learn stuff as you go on these residencies. You're welcome to come and touch and feel. But I like to draw onto the surface of copper using wax resist processes. I also screen print on copper. And I can only do it in my studio. So when I go out, I have to basically respond to my environment using other practices or other ways of making work. So usually you have to go around in a little compact handy carry case because you can't carry the press. So you know, I did this on this residency as well which was in New York where I made concertina books. The whole idea of what I do is about <coughs> you know, physically being in an environment and I was drawing on site so I would draw in front of something and I would respond to it. And then I never knew that the, you know, one page would link to the other page. And then I'd go back to the studio and I'd do some collaging and photo montaging and stuff like that. And I'd draw or I'd you know, cut back into something. And you know, when I pulled it out, <coughs> I found that all of this connected. So there was this beautiful synchronicity that happened because of the place I was in. So, this was this um, amazing New York residency. So this is how I see buildings. I thought I'd do this little diagram for you. So I take a photograph, and then what I see when I walk around spaces is built up of these kind of negative spaces. So I try and reconstruct what I'm looking at, not literally, but as a response to <coughs> that kind of space. And then sometimes, this was um, Hong Kong. Hong Kong, when I dated in Hong Kong, everything was out of control. There was so much to see. And everything moves at such a pace that it, it's almost unfathomable. So the way I translated that was purely that. It was just this mix mash of stuff. Buildings are all over you, and there are buildings that don't make sense, and there are buildings that should probably not be in Hong Kong, but they're there, and there's this mass population. So that's what came from that little residency. This was just a little walk around um, the art centre. And you know, and I have this habit of when I don't walk like this, I walk like that. <laughs> I have this habit of tipping <coughs> up. And much to my surprise, in Melbourne, there is this fantastic, this is the um, recital centre. So you know, when you look up, the simplest and sometimes the familiar, we forget about. So I've made the street my studio residency as well. So this was another project I did that was based off a residency I did in New York that was part of this process. So a lot of this, I'm just going to slip through because I just want to get to some places um, where I, I've worked. The lithograph is another process. I'm very much in the process. So lithography is working with stone, so limestone. So I worked with a lithographer in his studio and we collaborated on a project 
that resulted in a series of these kinds of things. Oh, we'll just forget that. Oh, this, this was London. So I went to London to be a part of this show. There was a Tatlin reconstruction show. So Vladimir Tatlin, who um, reconstructed or, or invented these architectural kind of beautiful artistic sculptural forms, became um, one of my you know, big projects that I showed at um, Dear, Dear Paddy Smith, which was in Collingwood. And I like showing you abandoned spaces or spaces that are going to you know, become apartments. I accept Jenny Port Gallery, that was different. <laughs> but, um, so this space was fantastic because you had to walk up three flights of stairs, which pissed a lot of people off, <laughs> and it was right at the top. But you got there and there was this euphoric kind of moment. And that was the old Patterson building, which is now, unfortunately, becoming an apartment on Smith Street. Copham Street was another fantastic space. So I used to walk around the city and look for abandoned warehouses and then find a real estate agent. And ask him <coughs> if I got public liability, would they let me lease the space for a month? And you can. You can lease it for a month. So this was the old... Rove, does anyone remember Rove? He was a, um, what do you call those commentators on like the project? Oh. Rove, so this is where he first started. It was his um, first production studio. So I made a response to works based on the fact that it was abandoned. So it once had something powerful in there, but then that's what the bands are becoming. The bands are kind of, it's almost like the end of an era. So I created these works and these are quite big and all, all etchings. And so I'd mask bits off. And funnily enough, this is coming back into my work now. That was 2005. And a lot of this is informing what I'm doing with the tapestries. I'm into reflections as well. Oh, this was a residency I had in 2006. So I was here for I had six months downtown, and then I had six months midtown, which was a completely different program. So here I did Drawings. I spent every day drawing. I did a drawing a day for the entire 18 months I was there, which was brilliant. I made sure I did a drawing a day, so there are thousands of these. But um, I'd wake up, I'd do a drawing, I'd go walk the streets, come back, and translate my response to what I just experienced. So a lot of the drawings have come from you know, me picking up bits of newspaper that were on the floor, so that became part of the project as well. You know, I would take photographs and have them printed at the one hour shop and then cut them up and stick them in because I didn't have a photocopier. So a lot of these um, are about walking the streets and that's what my work is about. It's about these buildings become part of my world, my environment. So they're very, very important to me. And I've been doing them for ages. However, when I started art school, I found, recently found some prints I did when I was at an art school and it was all a response to the Bible. Go figure. <laughs> the back of the Bible is the revelations, and there are these stories of, of debauchery, of sex, and violence. So I made these prints based on these, which were very figurative. So no figures appear in my work anymore. This is my beautiful studio. There, that's the prints that I can't transport. If it was inflatable, I'd be in different countries every year. Oh, that's me. And my press. <laughs> I like my press. <laughs> And this was another exhibition I had in another abandoned space in 2007. It's now, it's on Victoria Street in Abbotsford, which is now Aldi Supermarket. So this space was fantastic because it was completely vacated. It used to be an old um, motor works. So they had, you know, garage, there was debris, there was brick, there were falling ceilings. All I had to do was get public liability. And I have a friend who has a friend, so it doesn't cost much. And so these works became these precious things that I would put in spaces that were almost over. So life was over in this space. <coughs> and the other beauty of this space was the um, agent called me, because it was meant to be on for a month, this show, and after the, I think it was the first week, he called me and said, the bulldozers will be coming in next week. And part of me said, let them take the prints as well. Mm -hmm. So just let that, that, um, that what do you call that thing? They let that thing take the building and take the prints, but they were too precious. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, this was the... So yeah, these, these are the kinds of photos I would take and then I would transcribe. 
And this was another amazing moment in life. I found this in a little architect's window and it became part of what I call the LSM project, the Light Space Modulator, which tortured me for four years because it was part of a master's project. I don't know what I was thinking. But I've made um, laser cut. So now instead of using the plate as this precious traditional, you know, early 17th, 18th century process, I started cutting into it. And I made these mobile units that would trace images so what I wanted to do was make temporary prints. So prints that would just flash on the wall. And if you blinked, you missed it. So you snooze, you lose kind of thing. Because the idea of the print is that it's permanent. You addition it and you can spread the love if you wanted. So this was informed by the residency I had in um, Beijing. So they pick you up from the air. I, you get transferred from the airport to the studio, which is miles away. And you're in the middle of nowhere and they just, literally, you're just taken to the front door and the taxi driver goes <coughs> and they give you a key. And so you're stuck, isolated, in this space for three months. I met mean, lots of people, don't worry. So I spent <laughs> three months recreating Beijing inside my studio. So I started paper cutting. So I worked with the um, original paper cutters that used those amazing scissors. I gave that up after a week because I used standing eye. But here, the, so these are some of the paper cuts that I made. They were quite, again, temporary artworks, so they didn't last. But, you know, I also worked with this um, beautiful laser cutter who taught me how to cut plates with a water laser cutter. So he and I would, he spoke no English, I spoke no Mandarin, so we communicated by drawing. So I'd draw a line and he'd erase it, and I'd look at him and say, no, I can't do this again. So I draw the line I wanted and he'd just get the eraser out and just rub. So we spent a week doing that until we worked out that um, obviously I couldn't do what I wanted. <laughs> the, whole studio, the whole studio was filled with paper. So the stacks layered. And that, you know, looking back now, has informed a lot of what's happening on this residency. I'm in the China. But this is the response to or the reaction to the laser cut plates I made in Beijing that were thrown these most beautiful reflections that I then did drawings from. I'll just quickly skip through that. Uh, so, oh, and then I worked out that I could ink the laser cut plate and make a print from that. So then I took that plate to another level and got these beautiful solid kind of forms that were nothing like, you know, what I'm doing with the actual etching process traditionally. So then I started to make these laser cut images and just everything went crazy. <laughs> I could do it in red and I could make these concertina things and the shadow. So here I'm trying to translate through, you know, etching and aquatinting, the idea of the shadow and the reflection and the temporary light form that I was getting in Beijing. And then, you know, you, could, you can kind of arrange them so that they fit into a space. I don't like to make work for a particular exhibition. I like to make work for the space. So I respond to the space because architecturally that's what I like doing and I don't like showing in commercial spaces. But this show was fantastic. This was at Jenny Court Gallery. It's a beautiful space. Um, and, you know, it gives you the opportunity to see that you can make these you know, you can, you can make the, the, the print shift angle. You can make paper do what you want it to do, which is not dissimilar to the textile process where you're, you know, kind of layering and you're laboring over something. So even though I don't, you know, work with yarns and threads, I think part of my practice is very similar because of the time and the process. Now, these are the plates I made in Beijing. And so the plates took this other form and they could become these video projections. So then I went into video. That did not last. <laughs> Technology and I don't get along. So yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to show you that um, just some of the influences. So a lot of what Frank Gehry does is quite powerful because he's his drawing, the fact that he can do these and they become these real spaces. I mean, I did a lot of research about architects who made 
drawings of buildings that could never be realised or never be built, which I found quite fascinating. You know, artists like Danny Lieberstein, who is now, I think, reconstructing the Twin Towers site as a memorial site. But his work is brilliant. Just flipping. It snowed, it snowed on this residency. This was at Point B in Brooklyn, New York in 2011. I had this one for three months. So here I, digit, I found a digital printer. So he would, I would take the photographs and then have them printed in a really cheap fashion. And then I started using that as a base to work on top of because the press, I couldn't take it with me. So I really missed the press. So for three months I did these. So this is all based on me walking around the streets of New York, downtown again, and Brooklyn. Oh, that was at Tatlin Tower, I think. I'm just going to just very, just looking, looking. Oh, and then I found the digital thingy. <laughs> so then I found Illustrator. I started drawing with a mechanical tool, which is very frustrating, I'm not going to lie. But they became what informed my screen printing process. And I did spend, I'll just quickly, I did spend quite a bit of time in my New York residency again. I'm addicted to it. Because I did find, found a paper maker. And I'll show you these. Um, you can touch them for these. But these are all made from pulp. So in Brooklyn, downtown, um, I was looking for paper because I wanted to screen print. And there was a sign that said paper. So I rang the doorbell and the paper maker came out and we had a chat. She was very friendly. And so she let me in and she makes all her paper from you know, proper pop process. So I became addicted to this. She came to my studio. She saw what I was doing and she said, let's make paper together. So we collaborated and all this was made from pulp. So we could, we could tint pulp, we could layer pulp. Look at, look at pulp white on white, beautiful. So she was extraordinary. So oh, that was the studio in Brooklyn. That's me, I think how big that studio is. So you lived and worked and ate and entertained in here and you can also exhibit in here. So another powerful part of the residency is that you can have the exhibition on site as part of the project. I mean, I could just sit there and read if I wanted, but so see, this is me sitting off the screen for you. There's the pulp, pulp, pulp paper maker. So she, this is coming off the um, decal. So she would set, we would set up all these vats with um, pigmented pulp, and we would start creating. There she is. She's a long dirty person. <laughs> and then yeah, this magic happened. The snow, and I'm going to end with the snow because there was such an amazing residency, and I could go on, but I'm just going to stop. So thank you for listening. You're welcome to come and look at the.